The Industrialized Revolution was a dramatic change, beginning at the end of the 1700s. Until then, many of the world's economies were primarily agriculture with rural societies. The industrialized effect could not compare for many years, and the goods it produced remained relatively minor in comparison. However, at the end of the 1700s and the 1800s, the mass production of goods by means of machine power took off in a skyrocket, boosting economic systems such as capitalism to lead the economies. The industrialized revolution affected social classes and distributed wealth among the people. The working class grew, allowing the revolution to move forward, but it stopped at the second half of the 1800s due to bad working conditions. Workers were paid low wages, worked long shifts and risky conditions with no pensions or safety laws. During the 1848 revolution, labor laws and measures gave relief to the working class, allowing for the overall standard of living to rise. Women also played a role in the industrial revolution. Women before were treated relatively the same as men and helped in agricultural production. However, post-industrialization, men became the money makers and women became the stay-at-home, homemaker and child care, modeling Athenian society standards. This separation greatly defined the domestic sphere for women, leading to many revolutions and reforms. Before 1700, the Ottoman Empire was feared throughout Eurasia. Although, after 1700, military setbacks caused internal decay in the Ottoman Empire. Thus, they called the Ottoman Empire the sick man of Europe. Minor reforms kept them alive in the 1800s, but were still declining. By 1900, the conflict of World War I destroyed the Ottoman Empire, transforming them into modern Turkish states. Thus, by the 1800s, the steady collapse of the Ottoman Empire and the European balance of power became a big issue in Eurasia, causing the creation of the Eastern Question. By 1800s, other Middle Eastern regions such as Egypt, Caucasus, Persia, and Central Asia came over European imperialist rule, mainly British and Russia. <coughs> I have the Ottoman Empire. How dare those Europeans call me sick? <coughs> During the years of 1750 to 1914, Europe was ruled for the most part by absolute monarchies. This means that the monarchies had rule over their lands with absolute power, barely sharing their power with any other class. During the 1770s and 1810s, a wave of revolution wrecked the monarch's power. Following these revolutions, social reforms gained popularity and people began to fight for their rights, dealing a death blow to the absolute monarchies. Despite conservative backlash, the idea for democracy and a representative government continued to flourish in Europe. Especially the case in 1848 when a series of revolutions hit Europe in an unsophisticated and disorderly manner. By the early 1900s, most of Europe was industrialized and had a representative government. Eventually, the underlying tensions in Europe led to World War I. I'm Napoleon and I'm going to conquer all of Europe. No one's going to stop me. Austria, Russia, whoa, it's over. She'll Russia! No. Europe and America controlled 35% of the world's habitable territory and controlled 85% by 1914. From the mid-1800s to the early 1900s, imperialism took on a new aggressive character, referred to as a new imperialism. Imperialism started when industrialized nations needed easier ways to get raw materials and conquer new colonies. They also believed in the white man's burden to civilize the world. The largest of these empires was Britain and led to the phrase, the sun never sets on the British Empire. One of the main events of new imperialism was the scramble for Africa, in which Europe conquered nearly the entire continent of Africa. At the beginning of the 20th century, Europe formed an alliance system. It consisted of the triple alliance between Germany, Austria, and Italy, and the triple entente between Britain, Russia, and France. I am Utak of the clan. I have ruled these lands for dozens of years. Cheerio. Je suis français, c'est moi. Oh, this is German. This is my land. I was here first. I was here hey, first. This is my land, the motherland of Germany. All right then. <laughs> <laughs>